Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his peoples on earth. And when the angels had gone, they said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem to see this thing that has happened. So we too make our journeys to see and celebrate and glory in this thing that has happened among us. Let us pray. Coming God, Emmanuel, God with us in Jesus, we gather in this place where the light shines in the darkness and we know that the darkness cannot put it out or overcome it. As we celebrate your coming in Jesus, may we too know the light that shines in our darkness and in the darkness of the world. And as we contemplate conflict and violence, may we also celebrate joy and hope as we hear again the, the story of Jesus' coming and celebrate and make our journey during this final week of Advent to Christmas and celebration and joy. We ask this prayer in the name of Jesus, the Emmanuel God with us. Amen. I can only see faint images of people in the congregation, but I assume there are people there. <laughs> um, I spent a lot of time preparing the booklet for this service, and so only when I walked into the dark church, I realized that all those hours at my computer were completely an absolute waste of time, <laughs> because you can't actually see them. Somebody has already suggested, well, don't worry, they can be a memento of tonight's service. The good news is that all the hymns will appear on the screen. So you will be able to read, hopefully, what's on the screen. In general, everything will happen unannounced. Once I've read the first of the readings, sadly, Paul Evans, who was meant to do it, isn't well enough to be here. And so I'm reading the first reading. Once that's done, everything then carries on unannounced. Those of you who are reading from the Bible, please come up here, if you can, and be careful as you go down. And those of you who are reading poems, or what are actually hymns by Brian Wren, which I chose deliberately to celebrate Brian Wren's contribution to our thinking about Advent and Christmas. Those of you who are reading poems, please do so from the lectern. And everything, as I say, will proceed unannounced. Except for this first hymn. We sing, as traditionally done in these services of carols, once in royal David's city stood a lowly cattle shed, our first carol.
Isaiah announces the coming of God and bids his people in exile to be comforted. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our Lord endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring, bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, Here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends the flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Welcome the wild one by Brian Wren. Welcome the wild one, the desert declaimer, urgently, awesomely crying his news. Now, listen now, there is one who comes after. I am unfitted to fasten his shoes. Camel hair coated, unkempt and unbending, living off grasshoppers, honey and briars. Knee deep in water, he hails the impending, flame-giving spirits, enveloping fires. <clears throat> Hear from the herald, the king who's expected. World-ending wrath is the power he describes. God's own anointed, outspoken, uncensored, judging the palace, the priests, and the scribes. See now the young one who lingers and listens standing intent in the buzz of the throng, waiting in line on the brink of decisions, seeking the spirit that beckons through John. Gaspingly drenched by the people's baptizer, drowned in the grief of our groanings and cries, bowing beneath God's unfettered outsider, rising envisioned, he opens his eyes. Welcome God's love child, anointed, invested, desert impelled by the spirit within, world making love, shining, tempered and tested, now is at hand, let salvation begin. The Coming by R. S. Thomas 
and God held in his hand a small globe. Look, he said. The sun looked. Far off, as though through water, he saw a scorched land of fierce colour. The light burned there. Crusted buildings cast their shadows. A bright serpent, a river uncoiled itself, radiant with slime. On a bare hill, a bare tree saddened the sky. Many people held out their thin arms to it, as though waiting for a vanished April. An April to return to its crossed boughs. The sun watched them. Let me go there, he said. Advent Calendar by Rowan Williams He will come like last leaf's fall One night when the November wind has flayed the trees to the bone And earth wakes choking on the mould, the soft shrouds folding He will come like frost One morning when the shrinking earth opens on mist To find itself arrested in the net of alien sword-set beauty. He will come like dark, one evening when the bursting red December sun 
draws up the sheet and penny masks its eye to yield the star-snowed fields of sky. He will come, will come, will come like crying in the night, like blood, like breaking, as the earth writhes to toss him free. He will come like child. Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55, Mary's song. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 and 4. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come from me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace.
Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 6. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, the Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and he came to, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people, chief priests, the teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was going to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Verses 8 to 14, the birth of Jesus. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. 
Today, in the town of David, a, sire has been, um, sorry, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Joseph's Song by A. Brian Wren You were a babe of mine, I watched you born and wept with joy to see your sticky head. I held you in my arms. I watched you, awestruck as you slept. I love you, Christ of God. You were a babe of mine. You were a boy of mine. You wallowed in the sand. You copied me at work and played with hammer, wood, and nails. You talked to me and held my hand. I love you, Christ of God. You were a boy of mine. You were a youth of mine, 
Quite suddenly you grew and questioned all my words and ways. I felt you break in three. I raged, admired and feared for you. I love you, Christ of God. You were a youth of mine. You were a son of mine, full grown, my hope and pride. You went your puzzling way, a man so ready, fine and young. Life broke in me the day you died. I love you, Christ of God. You were a son of mine. You are the life of all, the Christ, the chosen one. You loved and gave yourself for me. As I belong to you, new worlds are born, new life begun. I love you, Christ of God. You are the life of all. from Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 to 9 a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse from his roots a branch will bear fruit the spirit of the Lord will rest on him the spirit of wisdom and of understanding the spirit of counsel and of might the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord and he will delight in the fear of the Lord 
He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, the young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. Amen. Who Comes by Brian Wren? Who comes? A child delivered on a stable floor. His mewing newborn cry is all that God can say of hunger, thirst and aching need, where Jesus lives today. Who comes? A Jew declaiming from a prophet's scroll his messianic cry is all that God can say of freedom, health, and saving hope, where Jesus lives today. Who comes? A man in dying moments on a cross. His God-forsaken cry is all that God can say of searching, scarred, and redeeming love where Jesus lives today.
Come and see the light by Brian Wren. Will you come and see the light from the stable door? It is shining newly bright, though it shone before. It will be your guiding star. It will show you who you are. Will you hide or decide to meet the light? Will you step into the light that can free the slave? It will stand for what is right. It will heal and save. By the pyramids of greed, there's a longing to be freed. Will you hide or decide to meet the light? Will you tell about the light in the prison cell? Though it's shackled out of sight, it is shining well. When the truth is cut and bruised and the innocent abused, will you hide or decide to meet the light? Will you join the hope, a light in a young girl's eyes, of the mighty put to flight by babies' cries? When the lowest and the least are the foremost at the feast, will you hide or decide to meet the light? Will you travel by the light of the babe newborn? In the cradle lit at night, there's a gleam of dawn, and the darkness all about is too dim to put it out. Will you hide or decide to meet the light? The Word of Life Before the world was created, the Word already existed. He was with God, and he was the same as God. From the very beginning, the Word was with God. Through him, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without him. The Word was the source of life, and this life brought light to mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. God sent his messenger, a man named John, who came to tell people about the light, so that all should hear the message and believe. He himself was not the light. He came to tell about the light. This was the real light, the light that comes into the world and shines on all mankind. The Word was in the world, and though God made the world through him, yet the world did not recognise him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believed in him. So he gave them the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means. That is, by being born as the children of a human father. God himself was their father. The word became a human being and full of grace and truth and lived among us. We saw his glory the glory which he received as the Father's only Son. Amen. Good is the flesh by Brian Wren. Good is the flesh that the word has become. Good is the birthing, the milk in the breast. Good is the feeding, caressing and rest. Good is the body for knowing the world. Good is the flesh that the word has become. Good is the body for knowing the world, sensing the sunlight, the tug of the ground, feeling, perceiving within and around. Good is the body from cradle to grave. Good is the flesh that the word has become. Good is the body from cradle to grave, growing and aging, arousing impaired, happy in clothing or lovingly bared, good is the pleasure of God in our flesh, good is the flesh that the word has become. Good is the pleasure of God in our flesh, longing in all as in Jesus to dwell, glad of embracing and tasting and smell, 
Good is the body for good and for God. Good is the flesh that the word has become. Before we sing our last carol, may I first of all thank those who have been busy at work before we ever came to this church this evening, preparing the church for this candlelit service. We are grateful for those who have set it up and prepared for it. I'm grateful also, of course, for those who have read, both from scripture and from poetry. I'm grateful also, as always, to Alan and the others who have enriched our worship Sunday by Sunday for his and their enrichment of our worship and glory to God, and especially to Alan for that last piece. I'm grateful for that. We will now sing in a moment the last carol, but beware, we are only singing two verses at this stage, and then please be seated for a moment for a short, very short reflection and prayer 
before we then stand for the last verse of that carol. After that last verse, there will be no prayers, no grace. There will be a moment of silence, and then Alan will play whatever Alan will play <laughs> at that moment. So we sing our last carol, O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. excitement I forgot one vital thing you won't need to be reminded that there are mince pies in the Wesley room but wait until the end of the service before you go and get them <laughs> everyone who is here is more than welcome and we grateful to Jan and the others who have helped us prepare for this and set this up as part of our celebration So we have come and heard the Christmas story, have sung familiar carols, yet we are still in Advent, and Advent is a time of waiting with eager expectation to welcome Jesus again, God with us, of gazing with wonder at the light that shines in the darkness of grasping with courage the hope that is set before us, of discovering even in darkness and despair God's promise of newness, of bearing witness to love and compassion at work in our lives, of discerning in our today God's final purposes for peoples and cosmos of recognizing Jesus as the one who was, who is, and is to come, of beginning our journeys to Bethlehem to see, to wonder, and to adore, but not yet of singing the final greeting of Christmas, of nativity, of birth. Only at the end of the waiting can we sing the very last verse of our last carol? On Christmas morning, when we meet here at this church at 10 o'clock to celebrate the Christmas feast and festival and joy, then we will sing, Yea, Lord, we greet thee, born this happy morning. Let us pray. God, our dayspring and our dawn, we turn to you when we fear the dark and all around us weep. 
We pray you greet us with your shining light that we may spread your warm embrace and kindle the hope of Christmas in all whose lives remain in shadow. Come and be our strength, O Lord, our hope and our salvation. Lord, the sight of the guiding star brought, ho brought hope, courage and joy to those who had journeyed to find you. When our journey seems long, when hope seems far away, when our courage is failing, fill us with faith and trust. Shine your light on our fears. Lift our hearts with our joy. Help us to recognize you in our brothers and sisters throughout the world. Show us how we can work together so that we may all come to share in the life promised to us by Jesus, the Savior of us all. So, set forth on your journey to Christmas and beyond. And as you go, may choirs of angels accompany your steps. And when you reach the place, may you wonder at God's promise become real in Jesus. And now, and into all your future, may grace, love, and companionship from God, source, redeemer, and renewer be with you and all who long for the light. Amen.